Hello and welcome to your January 2022 full moon reading. Now the full moon is coming in on the 17th of January um, 2022 at 11.48pm. The effect of the full moon can obviously be felt um, a couple of days before and certainly uh, quite a number of days after. Before we go into the individual star signs, uh, let me just talk about this spe uh, specific full moon to you, because this full moon is dubbed the wolf moon. Obviously the Native Americans called it that because that was the time when the, um, the, the wolves were howling quite a lot, very likely because of scarcity of food. The point is, it is now associated with the wolf. And the wolf is one of the most prominent figures uh, when it comes to spirit animal guides. So what the wolf is saying to you, the energy that the wolf lends to the energy of that full moon, so to speak, is the fact that you are not supposed to go things alone. Have a pack, find your tribe, lead the pack. Make sure that everybody in your tribe, in your pack, for want of a better word, is safe. But also remember, if the alpha male or the alpha female doesn't look after itself for whatever reason, or is not allowed to really look after herself or himself, then obviously the whole pack suffers. So make sure you are your own number one. If you come first, your unit, which is all the people you live with, um, will automatically be safe because you are at your best. Right? So remember this. The wolf is probably also the only canine that when there's um, dire, when they're in dire straits, they can eat berries. And to a large extent, at times, um, at least in the past, they would depend on berries they would find. So <clears throat> other canines can't really do that. I'm not drawn to that as well, um, or either. <coughs> but so what you have here is a very, very versatile animal. And because the, the wolf by default has to scavenge mostly. So it's not super aggressive, which is another reason why the Native Americans adopted the wolf as um, uh, sort of the symbol, the mascot in, in modern terms, if that makes sense. But they also noticed historically um, that there were loads of wolves around wherever there were tribes. And so what some of them started were instead of uh, putting traps out, they would actually put food out. Because when the wolves were close, um, it would protect the entire village, so to speak. So, again, eventually there was a, uh, a working together, if that makes sense. And so all of this also is then reflected in the energy of the wolf moon. right? So work together, reach out, don't be isolated, which is sort of the main message here of that wolf. Right. So the wolf moon is um, this year on January 17th, 2022, coming in fully at 11.48 p.m. UK time. And now um, let me just um, plug myself here for 15 seconds <laughs> before we then go into the individual star signs. And we will be starting with the star sign we're in, which is Capricorn. Well, there's quite a number of planets in retrograde in January 2022. Now, retrogradation is a very naturally occurring phenomenon. Um, and it, depending, on, depending on what planet it is um, and where they are um, in the stars and in the universe, um, tells us how much uh, of an effect it can have. So in January, we have Venus, Pluto, Saturn, um, and Mercury in retrograde. And we will talk about them when we come to the star signs they actually govern. Um, but more generally, 
obviously we'll talk about Venus more when we talk about Taurus and Libra, which is the zodiac signs or the star signs that are governed by Venus. When Venus is in retrograde, which is what happens, uh, what is happening this month, um, and it will be in retrograde until the end of January, I think January 29th, it just means because it is the planet of love, and in retrogradation, the idea is always, when they're retrograde, things slow down a little. So maybe this isn't the time, January, for all of you, for all of us, to actually rush anything with regards to making love work, if that makes sense, right? And then we have Pluto in retrograde. Now, Pluto, um, together with Mars, is the ruling planet, or the governing planet, I don't like the term ruling, <laughs> of Scorpio. Rule of thumb is, if a planet is in retrograde and the planet governs your sign, then the effects of that retrogradation are less prominent for your star sign, if that makes sense, right? So, the only planet that really affects us a lot is Mercury. And Mercury will be or is in um, the, the retrograde until February the 4th. Now, Mercury, interestingly, Mercury, while most planets have a male or female polarity, Mercury and Uranus are the only two planets that have a neutral gender, which means they adapt to whatever situation is out there. So even when they're in retrograde, they can help you and all of us adapt to situations. The problem with Mercury is, is because he is the closest planet to the sun, um, it affects us the most. Mercury can only ever be in your own star sign or an adjacent one. Rule of thumb is if Mercury or any planet, but if Mercury is in your own sign, then its antics affect you less. And if it is in an adjacent sign, anything that has to do with communication, um, you may doubt yourself. And because you go and have doubt when you actually try to get things sorted and um, start conversations somewhere, people pick up on it. So um, therefore, communication isn't always that great, right? So be this as it may, now let's have a look at... Um, the reason why I wanted to do a bonus reading, a bonus video, is, and I will do this every year, is because of the full moon. The full moon, because it is this massive blob in the sky, <coughs> and, the, and the moon is the, the, the planet that actually, in a way, informs how we feel, if that makes sense. So, for those of you who are really in astrology, I understand that... The moon, just like the sun, is only called a planet for convenience. They are just luminaries. I get that. But we look at it as a planet simply as well, because obviously it is part of Earth, right? Um, the moon is. So anyway, where were we? Um, yeah. So let's just start with the... Um, with the star signs, starting with the with, with Capricorn. So, I, like I said, I just lost my train of thought here. The reason why I wanted to do um, a monthly reading, a full moon reading every month, is because in and around the full moon, normally sort of two days before and maybe a couple of days after, the energy can change quite drastically to whatever it is the guides told you in your individual readings. And so I thought if we can have, you know, one card uh, or one guidance, one message, for each star sign, at least we have something to go on about. Okay, now we're in the star sign of Capricorn. Now Capricorn, the other planet that we have in, um, it's not in retrograde as such, but the, the other planet that affects you is Saturn. Now Saturn sits in Capricorn for almost the entire year, if that makes sense. I actually wrote that down, that's why I have to actually look it up. It only ever <laughs> chickens out into Aquarius from the end of April to mid of July, before it then goes back into Capricorn. Now Saturn, as a planet, Capricorns, is a planet that tells you that you have to <laughs> restrain yourself, because Saturn teaches through restrictions. So ultimately, what that means as an energy is for all of us, to when Saturn is very close to our star sign, um, to understand that sometimes things will be slowed down. Now, for Capricorns, because Saturn is in your sign for the majority of the year, you are actually lucky 
because Saturn is your governing planet, which means when he is in your star sign, because he is the energy that is with your star sign all the time, because he is your governing planet, um, ultimately, because Saturn sits in Capricorn, you actually have an energy boost. You have an extra strength that you have literally all year, which means from now on <laughs> to mid-April, and then from April, mid-April to, to July the 12th, actually. Um, Saturn is in Aquarius before he or she comes back um, to govern you again, if that makes sense. So don't be afraid. Whatever you read about Saturn in, in, in Capricorn and Saturn as, as a, on a whole, it is your governing planet, which means the energy of Saturn, the positive energy of Saturn, helps Capricorn the most. And because Capricorn uh, is the star sign Saturn sits in, you have an extra boost. So this is going to be a bloody awesome year in many ways. And yet you will sometimes feel restricted simply because that's what Saturn does, right? So <clears throat> with regards to January, let's have a quick look at what the guys have to you. Well, you have to grow. And the crow is literally saying, in and around the time of the full moon, you will feel or maybe even go through changes. And it is important to understand that changes need to happen. The more organically they happen, the better. Pointless to fight change. Now, the crow is also the, the animal guide that is associated with magic. So it is a very high energy that is also supporting you while you go through changes. So Capricorn, I can't find anything negative um, for you at all with regards to your guides <coughs> and the fact that Saturn sits in your sign. Okay, so moving on to the next star sign. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies, it's my asthma, it's really shit. So yeah. Um, yeah, where was I? <laughs> Next star sign, Aquarius. Let's see what we got for Aquarians. Here we go. Aquarians. Aquarius, you have the rabbit. So, again, this is about in and around the time of the full moon. Full moon comes in on the 17th, so you will feel it strong strongest maybe around the 14th, 15th, and maybe until about the 22nd. So about that time. So it's a sort of a period between normally two to three days before and three to four days after where the full moon, if the full moon energy lingers, okay? And that goes for uh, goes across the board for all of us. But Aries, for you, you have the rabbit. So it is therefore mid-month of January 2022 when the full moon is there for you to realize, wow, there are so many rabbit holes that I can explore. So it is the time for Aries, when the full moon is actually hitting you, if that makes sense, to realize now is the time to be proactive and maybe go down a road or a route you would normally not dare go down to, or go down on. So, right? They're not asking you to be super brave, but they're asking you, should you feel, I'm not in the right place, the rabbit, as your animal guide for that period of t in time. Um, and the strong energy of the full moon are saying to you, well, if you wanted to change it, mid-January is the time, right? Going to the next star sign, the sign of Pisces, which is my Pisces, my star sign, right? <coughs> as you know, Pisceans, um, we are what is called the star sign of the dreamer uh, because we are governed by Neptune. And all Neptune does to anybody is um, bring spiritual awareness since he governs Pisces. Um, that's why we are by default very deep and sometimes also a bit weird um, and maybe a bit detached or try to be detached from things because our depth um, doesn't always allow us to, to not feel, if that makes sense, right? So we are by default therefore the most um, spiritual sign. I know other, other star signs maybe object but it is just because Neptune is the planet that governs our star sign and it is the planet that brings spiritual awareness to all of us, right? to each star sign. And because he obviously um, is the god of the waters, he is all about renewal, if that makes sense. Right? So, here we go. What we have for us Pisceans is we have the hawk. Energy of the full moon comes in 
like I said, the full moon comes in on the 17th, you will feel it from the 14th to maybe the 22nd around that length. See, the reason why I bloody have to re re repeat everything is because the video is timestamped for you to just flick through it if you have no time. And therefore, because I don't know if you're a person that watches the whole video or if you just look at your star sign, sometimes I have to repeat stuff if I feel it is important for that star sign. <coughs> right, since we're with Pisces, the message that the guides have for you and I, because I'm a Pisces, Pisces too, is when the full moon is happening, in and around the time of the full moon, we don't have to make any changes, we don't have to look at things panic in panic, because we have the hawk, and the hawk is using the upthrust of the air to glide. So what they're saying is to us Pisceans and to you Pisceans who are watching this, go with the flow, don't get too excited about the extra energy the full moon brings, go with the flow, um, it's not the time to majorly focus on change, I have to refer you to your... Um, sort of more or less in-depth um, January reading that I have recorded. You can find this, obviously, on this very channel. So make use of it, right? That was Pisces. <clears throat> now we're going into the first star sign of the zodiac, which is Aries. So, um, Aries, here we are. You have the scarab. The scarab is basically saying to you that, <laughs> again, this is all about around the time of the full moon. Your time will come. The, the, the scarab is the animal that is or that can lie dormant for quite some time. And then when, when the situation of the soil is more beneficial, the scarab goes back to work. The scarab is a beetle, very revered in Egypt. And because he can lie dormant and then come back to life, the scarab represents regeneration. So around the time of the full moon. Full moon comes in on the 17th of January at 11.48 p.m. UK time. You will feel it, you feel the effect of it, probably from the 14th to around the 22nd. That's all the strongest time <coughs> you will feel the full moon because regardless of whether or not there's a full moon, there's eight phases that the moon has to go through each month and he doesn't let himself be deterred by the energy of the full moon. So, but the full moon energy lingers, right? And so um, around that time, um, regenerate, be good to yourself, Aries. And remember that sometimes because you are the beginning, you are the first sign of the zodiac. And when you are the first, you have nobody to call upon. People call upon you, if that makes sense. So there is a part of Aries that can be a tad burdened because everybody just wants to want something from you, if that makes sense. But because around the time of the full moon, you are asked, because you have free will, that's why I'm doing this, but you are asked <coughs> to regenerate, to actually be um, calmer, um, remove yourself a little bit from the hustle and bustle. Um, that is your task for the time of the full moon or in and around the full moon. That was Aries going to the next star sign, which is Taurus. Now, I mentioned I mentioned Taurus in Libra earlier because you are governed by Venus. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your desire. Right. So you are governed by by Venus, and just like Libra, and Venus is in retrograde, and so in uh, all throughout the months of January. So you might feel, with regards to love, and with regards to um, intimate relationships, that things are a bit slow, that's simply because of the, of the retrogradation, right? <clears throat> but because Venus is your governing planet, even if things feel difficult, because Venus is your planet, um, you get extra energy and extra strength to deal with stuff. On top of that, the guidance, the message for the star sign of Taurus for the time in and around the full moon of January 2022, you have the spirit of initiation. All they're saying is, around the time of the full moon, now is the time to actually get things started, start focusing again. Um, they're, what they're showing me, my guides, is literally someone putting 
a key into an engine and go and you know off you go <laughs> if that makes sense. so you have the spirit of initiation you has have to be or to be the driving force in your life now taurus by default you are a very strong sign and sometimes you can be a bit too outspoken <coughs> so what i'm hearing is make it work for you be pushy because it will work for you okay so that was Taurus going to the next star sign of Gemini. You are watching the full moon bonus reading for the month of January 2022 with myself, Thomas Janak. Now, if you enjoy my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Gemini. Let's have a look what the guides have for you. <coughs> Even around the time of the full moon, the guides give me and therefore give you the kid fox. The fox tells you to remember in and around the time of the full moon that you are an old soul. Therefore, you have been through more shit than you can imagine and you will get through whatever it is going on in your life at this point in time as well. You have the kid fox. The reason why they're making this a bit of a topic here. It's because the kid fox lives in the desert. And because in the desert there's less opportunities, um, the kid fox at times can feel a bit boxed in. And so in and around the time of the full moon for the, star, for the sign of Gemini, <clears throat> for the wolf moon in January 2022, that is, you may feel a bit stuck, a bit boxed in, which is why the guides are saying to you, is remember, you are an old soul and things will not stay difficult forever right that was gemini now we're going to cancer now cancer <laughs> you are the person the, 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 the person and the sign that is governed by the moon right so the full moon uh, has the strongest effect on your sign because simply the moon is your sign but because the moon is your sign what is amplified is just the positivity of the, the moon being at its more illumin most illuminated and therefore its so-called strongest, if that makes sense. So every full moon, Cancerians, you are at your peak, right? So let's see what the guides give you. You have the fish, Cancerians. While you are at the peak, the fish is understanding that this the fish is always about feminine energy, to be fair. So and the fish is basically saying what I need or what you need, Cancerians, at the at this point in time, which means in and around the time of the full moon in January 2022, is space, right? So as the full moon gives you extra energy, look at the situations where you feel, this doesn't feel right, I feel um, trapped almost, that's the feeling they give me. And um, you have the right to free yourself from that, if that makes sense, right? But it will very likely be a process, because that's what I'm getting to. Um, Cancerians, because also of the depiction of the crab, um, almost nothing in, in the life of Cancerian um, is, is fast, comes in super fast, if that makes sense. So, so surprises um, can hit you quite a bit, because they're coming in too fast. You go like, what the heck's going on? So in and around the time of the full moon, kind of long story short, Cancerians, Reflect on where you feel stuck, trapped, not appreciated, and swim away from it. Okay? I know it's easier said than done, but that is the message that the guides give you. So, moving on to the next star sign, which is Leo. Now, Leo, you are governed by the sun, right? <laughs> so, what you have is the energy of the sun, and now you have the moon, at its most illuminated. So you get more light than the sun normally would give you. Therefore, your sign as well, uh, which is the only sign that is governed by the sun, your sign as well benefits every time there is a full moon. Right? Let's see what the guides have got for you for the months of January, for the time of in and around the, the, the full moon. Right? You have the seahorse. What the guides are saying to you is, we're giving you extra energy, full moon, every bloody month, <coughs> excuse me, for you to look into what it is 
that needs to change. And you can, if you are a person that, that didn't use the, um, the timestamps, but watch the whole thing, we just talked about cancer. And because cancer is governed by the moon, which is the ruler of the night, and you are governed by the sun, the ruler of the day, you will find that cancerians and leos oftentimes have a bit of overlapping energy here, right? So the cancerians had the kid fox, this is a sort of feeling um, maybe a bit... Uh, boxed in if that makes sense sorry they hit the scut up you know um anyway uh, watch it well, all i'm saying is um the energy for for cancerians was to 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 understand that you can you know uh, regenerate and and the seahorse is doing the same seahorse is saying to you um okay let, let me let me put it this way the way the seahorse appears to me is by reminding me that about 90% of seahorses do not make it in captivity. Now, that is just a statistic, and it is a really dire one, <clears throat> if that makes sense, right? <clears throat> so they're not doing well in captivity. The analogy, therefore, is for you Leos, um, is that you, ha you have to understand that every time there's a full moon, or this month at least, there is a full moon, and you're going through transformation, and because you're not doing well in captivity... They're asking you to reflect just like they asked Cancerians, um, in a way, uh, to actually assess where you feel unappreciated and where you feel not welcome, right? Um, and then make changes to this, right? So the seahorse as well is about feminine energy. So this has to do with your softer side. This has to do with understanding that if there has to be changes, doing things aggressively will get you absolutely nowhere, right? Use your feminine intuition. And if you are a bloke that is listening to this, trust me, everybody has a feminine side, right? And it's no weakness to let that out every now and again and actually acknowledge that you can be a bit of a softie, if that makes sense, right? So... That was Leo going to the next star sign, which is Virgo. We're looking at the wolf moon, the full moon in January 2022. It comes in on January 17th at 11.40 p.m. UK time. This is a reading that basically helps you understanding that the energy changes every time a full moon comes in. You normally feel it about two days before and about four, until about four days after. So there's this almost a week uh, energy. And what I thought... Um, we should be doing is just have a, um, a little extra reading, a bonus reading every month, just to get you some guidance for just the time around the um, the full moon. So, here we go. Virgos, your animal guide that shows up is the elephant. So, they're not saying to you, you're the elephant in the room at all, but what they're saying to you around the time of the full moon, which actually, funnily enough, is the time where people have heightened senses, right? <clears throat> so, and the elephant is the animal that represents memory. In other words, what they're saying to you is, you remember everything, and perhaps it is time, especially now that the energy is heightened, with the full moon being fully illuminated, is for you to learn and to realize that sometimes carrying stuff with you that no longer serves you doesn't help you. Maybe it is time to accept an apology you will never quite get. Okay, that's all we got for the star sign of Virgo. Moving on to Libra. Here we go. Let's have a look what the guides can give you as an um, extra, an additional um, guidance for the time of in and around the, um, the the full moon. Now remember, Librans, by default, you are the scale, right? So if your life is not in balance, you will feel unhinged. You will not feel well. Now, the energy or the, the message that the guides give you is the dancer of inspiration. Dancing in that context, actually means pussyfooting. You, you want to move, but you're not quite sure how to move. This is my attempt to, 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 to do a scale. <laughs> right? <coughs> you have the dance of inspiration. Don't pussyfoot about um, inspiring yourself before you inspire others. Decide, I'm going to make changes to the areas of my life 
that do not bring me the balance my soul so strongly desires. Right? That was the message for Libras going into Scorpio. <laughs> now, Scorpio, I mentioned you earlier um, because Mars and Pluto are your governing planets. Pluto is in retrograde at the time of the full moon. Now, Pluto has a very erratic orbit. So, it takes this planet 248 years to actually circumvent orbit the entire sun. And because of his, his erratic behavior, sometimes he can spend up to 12 years in each sign or up to 30, depending on how he journeys. And because Pluto literally approaches the sun lying on his belly, if he had one, <laughs> right? Pluto by default um, highlights a lot of difficulties. And because it is your planet, Scorpio, it is your governing planet, anything that you go through at this point in time that feels more difficult, Pluto is saying, Oi, I'm your governing planet. I've been dealing with this shit, right? Being different, having a, a, a difficult orbit for thousands of years. And I'm your governing planet together with the fiery planet of Mars. You will be fine. As a matter of fact, you have a special energy every time Pluto is mentioned. The fact that Pluto is in retrograde simply means that the energy he normally lends to you, which is obviously stronger on the full moon, um, is a little less effective during the time of the wolf moon because Pluto is in retrograde. Okay? I hope this helped going to the next star sign. We have Sagittarius left and then we are done. Right, this is a, um, an additional reading. From now on, there will be a, 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 um, a bonus full moon reading every single month because when the full moon comes in, so, so to speak, two days prior and maybe three to four days after, so um, the energy of the full moon can and does have an effect on you. So whatever has come up for you in your individual readings that you can find on this channel for the month of January 2022. Um, the energy changes when the full moon comes in. And so my idea was to ask the guides to give you a little bit of a hint and maybe a bit of a tip and a message um, how to deal best with the changes that actually happen when they happen. If that makes sense. So for the last star sign of this reading, which is Sagittarius, remember that you are the archer. Okay, so therefore, if you want to make changes to your life, you have to shoot the arrow strongly. The real depiction of Sagittarius is the, is the centaur. The centaur is half human, half horse. Now, the ancients, when they said it's a half-breed, they literally stated a fact. There was no judgment in that term. These days, with fucking racism, whatever we have in this bloody planet, we <laughs> kind of stuff so at times... You know, you say half breed to someone and you're, you're half this, half that, you're not fully there. That's all negative. When you are called a half breed because you are represented and guided by the centaur, it is simply a statement. There's nothing negative to be two beings at once. If anything, you have twice the strengths, right? So... On a whole, before we even go and get you, and get you um, extra information from the guides, just by your guy, by your sign alone, understand that when you have people around you that are judgmental, you will feel it very strongly. Now, the good thing is that that um, Capricorn, uh, uh, Sagittarius, where am I? Sagittarius, you you are by default. The, the ninth month. And nine is the number of completion. So whatever you put your mind to, simply by being the ninth month in the, in the zodiac, in the, in the wheel, the, the star sign um, wheel, the number nine, which is the number of completion, is another supporting number for your star sign. So don't listen to the idiot statements other people make uh, and the negative statements that they make. Remember, whatever it is you put your mind to, you can achieve, right? So, 
Let's have a look what the guides have for you. You have the ancestor of skills. Come on, can't talk. You have the ancestor of skills. For Sagittarians, what that means is you came here to this planet when you were re when you were born, and I, and I probably should say reborn, right? So because we come here again and again, you had the ancestors of skills here, or you have the ancestors of skills here, which means yes, there is a part of you. Um, especially as the sign that has the completion element in it, you probably will feel um, that anything that runs in the family, um, any illnesses, any bad habits <laughs> that you can um, <clears throat> decipher there, uh, might affect you as a being quite strongly. So maybe um, you have to look into ancestral healing and maybe even cut away some of the elements or maybe some of the people from your family line that do not serve you. Ultimately, you have the ancestor of skills. So what the guides are saying to you is, you came here with an arsenal of knowledge that sits inside you, waiting for you to explore it. So the message here for the final star sign of this month, which is Sagittarius, we're looking at the full moon, the wolf moon on January the 17th, 2022. You have the ancestor of skills. What they're saying to you is because these skills are inside you, it is really, really important for you to understand if you wanted to find out what you came here with, it makes a lot more sense for you to actually look at your spiritual core because we are all spiritual beings currently housed in a body. And because you came here with the skills that are sort of hidden, because we come here with a sort of a clean, sl clean slate. Um, what the guides ask you to do, because you came here with some skills that will actually serve you, um, let them serve you spiritually. Okie dokie. Guys, this has been a much longer video than I anticipated, but you can see because the energy is so different when the full moon hits. Um, and I had the inclination of let's do this. Um, you can just see that the guides have a lot to say. Okie dokie, guys. And guys, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share, especially the liking helps me grow my channel. If you like my work, you can support me by buying me a coffee on www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. And remember, if you subscribe, I will be recording in-depth individual readings for each star sign every month plus a bonus reading just for the full moon like we have done here in January 2022. See you all in February.